From the Cronkite Studios in downtown Phoenix, this is Cronkite News. A total of 10 reported shootings along Interstate 10. Now the worry on the road is spilling into Phoenix neighborhoods. It is a basic test of our humanity and who we are as a human family. Arizona Congressman Trent Franks has brought the tears of the Capitol in an ongoing debate over Planned Parenthood funding. And find out how one business is pushing the limits when it comes to surfing and sustainability. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News. I'm Yahira Hawkhead. And I'm Jake Gay, and thanks for joining us. DPS is investigating another possible shooting along Interstate 10 this morning. A driver said his window was broken while he was on the freeway near 36th Avenue. No one was hurt, but this is the 10th report of a shooting along that stretch of I-10 the past two weeks. The case has had Doug, Governor Doug Ducey releasing this statement. The safety of Arizonians is the number one priority, and we are committed to apprehending those responsible for these crimes. But residents near the attacks are voicing their concerns. Cronkite News reporter Ivan Rodriguez joins us. Ivan, how is the community dealing with a possible serial shooter? I went to 27th uh, Avenue and McDowell Road, right near the freeway stretch where people have reported broken car windows and even holes in their vehicles. People I spoke to are concerned. In the surrounding Phoenix neighborhoods, a popular reaction and emotion to the I-10 shooter is one of fear. Many small businesses in the valley say they are a little more cautious, and many are telling their children and even grandchildren to be careful. Me siento muy preocupada. I feel very worried because I have children, grandchildren, who travel on the streets. Any, any action of violence in anything other than self-defense is, is horrible. It shouldn't be done. Yeah, it, I, I mean, it's good that nobody's been hurt yet, but there's property damage. There's inconvenienced lives. There's, there's people that I'm sure to some level have been traumatized by it. It's absolutely not right. I, I do hope he's caught and brought to justice. Silent Witness is now offering a $20,000 reward for information that leads to an arrest. If you have a tip, call 480-WITNESS. In the Broadcast Center, Ivan Rodriguez, Cronkite News. Congress began its long-awaited hearings on Planned Parenthood today, the first meeting since anti-abortion activists started releasing secretly recorded videos of Planned Parenthood officials discussing fetal tissue. Cronkite News reporter Elizabeth Blackburn is in Washington. And Elizabeth, it looks like the emotions on this issue really ramped up today. Yes, Yahira, tempers on both sides of the issue flared. And Arizona Representative Trent Franks even cried as he talked about abortion practices. In spite of all the political noise, protecting these little babies and their mothers is not a Republican issue. And it is not a Democrat issue. It is a basic test of our humanity and who we are as a human family. The abortion debate is nothing new to the Capitol, but the recent videos have sparked to stop federal funding of Planned Parenthood. A Scottsdale-based group agrees. Americans should not be forced to be complicit in the barbaric practices that Planned Parenthood is clearly engaged in. These videos show it. If anyone has seen the videos, we know what we're talking about here. So rather, let's just redirect those funds and put them towards clinics that really actually care about women's health. However, Executive President of Planned Parenthood says the hearing was built on false claims. Well, what I can say is that the majority uh, on this committee, uh, the Republicans who have called for this so-called hearing, uh, definitely made up with uh, fervor and fabrication what they didn't have in fact. And I think that's the bottom line of the hearing. Her comments came after the hearing where Planned Parenthood was not invited to testify. That there really wasn't any fact presented and in fact they were very clear that the real intent of the hearing was to go after safe legal abortion in this country and Planned Parenthood as a provider of abortion but also as a provider of women's health care and as you know Planned Parenthood is the nation's largest women's reproductive health care provider almost for a hundred years now. Today's hearing is not the last of the issue. Pro-life lawmakers have threatened to delay the budget over Planned Parenthood funding. Live in Washington, D.C., I'm Elizabeth Blackburn, Cronkite News.
Our Washington crews were also there today as some key Republicans gathered at a Capitol Hill rally to speak out against President Obama's nuclear deal with Iran. The Tea Party sponsored the rally as the Senate prepares to vote on the deal. Republican presidential candidates Ted Cruz and Donald Trump spoke out against it. Trump said he's publicly been opposed to this deal from the beginning. Never, ever, ever in my life have I seen any transaction so incompetently negotiated as our deal with Iran. Look for a multimedia report on the rally tomorrow on our new online home. Go to Ares, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Governor Doug Ducey plans to travel next month to an international conference on water technology in Israel. Ducey will be joined by the state's water resource director and other leaders. This visit comes after the aftermath of the Colorado mine spill with the state expecting a shortfall in its Colorado River water supply in the coming years. The conference will allow Ducey and other state leaders to learn about the emerging technologies used in other nations. To the South Valley now, where Goldman Ranch lies directly in the path of the future South Mountain Freeway. Vacant homes are being demolished, but for homeowners who still live there, the construction hits too close to home. Cronkite News reporter Audrey Wheel visited the neighborhood. A wake-up call for the few residents still living in Goldman Ranch. Not just because demolition starts early. They weren't supposed to start till 7.30, they started at 7. But also because they know their houses are next. I hope I'm just going to move out, walk away and not see it because it would be really sad. Sherry Woodring lives two doors down from the first house that was demolished. It's so hard to see this destruction. You're used to seeing houses, you go down the street and everything is the same and you look here and it's this gaping hole. It's just horrendous. ADOT is planning to acquire 73 homes in the Goldman Ranch neighborhood. This house is one of more than 50 that has already been acquired. It's vacant and ready for demolition. We're still in the process of getting uh, appraisals on more properties, but it is our goal to come to a mutual agreement with all the property owners. Thus far, we have not had to start uh, the formal eminent domain uh, process on any of the homes. It is our goal to try to avoid that. Even if it does come down to eminent domain, ADOT is required by law to pay a fair market value for the homes and compensate homeowners with relocation costs. Woodring just accepted an offer from ADOT, but still has concerns. It does what it's supposed to do and takes the congestion out of the center of the valley, then it'll be a good thing. If it doesn't, then it'll be a colossal failure and a very expensive failure at that. The freeway isn't expected to be completed until late 2019. In Phoenix, Audrey Wheel, Cronkite News. The summer is over, but vacation planning for fall break is underway. Coming up on Cronkite News, we'll tell you about the perks of the peso, why travel to Mexico could help stretch your money. At ASU, we believe the most important semester is the one that starts after you get your diploma, the one called life. So we work hard to help our alumni thrive, teaching them the importance of not only achieving their goals, but exceeding them. With innovative programs that embrace hands-on learning, that encourages real-world growth, our alumni know it can be the education of a lifetime, for a lifetime. For more information, asu.edu. I'm an urban gardener. I'm a PhD student in criminology law and society. I have an expertise in construction history. I also happen to be a swing dancer. Oh, and I'm a source. And I really like being a source. Great journalism requires great sources, and we want you to be one of them. Arizona PBS is building a network of viewers, people with insight into the stories we cover and the stories we should cover. Explore what it means to be a source for the Arizona PBS Public Insight Network at azpbs.org slash pin. Are you a news junkie, history buff, science or nature lover? Then discover a world, an entire channel devoted to bringing the world home to Arizona. Watch 8 World on Cox 88 or over the air via antenna on 8.3. To find out how to tune into 8 World through your satellite or another cable provider, visit azpbs.org slash world or call 602-496-2308. Discover your world. 8 World. 
see this patio? There used to be a motorcycle sitting there, a bike I didn't use and didn't want, so I donated it to public television, and they took care of everything. In addition to supporting my favorite programs, I earned a tax deduction. Turn something you don't need into something you really want. Contact the Vehicle Donation Program. 8 is Arizona PBS, a service of Arizona State University. APS says a fire at a Douglas discount store left most of the city's customers without power for most of the morning. This all happened in Douglas, Arizona, on the southeastern corner of the state. Douglas Fire Department spokesman Mike King says the fire that gutted the two-story building was reported shortly before 2 a.m., where approximately 10 firefighters responded, including some who were off duty. A full investigation into the cause of the fire is underway, but APS spokeswoman Ann Hamberlin says smoke from the fire caused the power to go off, leaving local schools to delay opening. More Americans are choosing to spend their vacation dollars in Mexico. One reason? Their dollars can buy more south of the border. Jennifer Souls joins us to talk about how the peso dollar exchange rate benefits tourists and other travelers. Travel experts and tourists alike see Mexico as a big bargain. In recent months, the peso has lost significant value, meaning that you can stretch your American dollar. Mexico remains among the top foreign destinations for Americans. And these days, beaches south of the border are an even bigger bargain. It just worked out great, and the peso just, it really worked for us being from the States. The peso has lost a quarter of its value, and that means travelers with dollars can get more for their money. We went there to buy a house because the peso is so high compared to the dollar, and so uh, we made an offer on a house there, and we are planning on being there November through May, and we're really excited about it. Robert Principe is just back from Mazatlan, where he and his wife now own a winter home. Americans won't save on flights or at big resorts. Those are usually priced in dollars, but they will save in bars, restaurants, and at local shops. I can predict that this kind of situation is going to maintain for several months because the volatility of the economy in different parts of the world. Prices in Mexico have not gone up to compensate for the peso devaluation as they have in the past. So for now, Mexico remains a great value destination if you have dollars. One travel expert I spoke with said more Americans are expected to travel to Mexico for Day of the Dead celebrations. The popular Mexican holiday will take place at the beginning of November. Live in the Media Center, Jennifer Souls, Cronkite News. It could be a missing child or a senior citizen who gets lost. Losing track of a family member can be terrifying. Coming, ne coming up next on Cronkite News, we meet an Arizona entrepreneur creating new technology to make it easier to find anyone who wanders away. Plus, a good night's sleep is hard to come by, especially when you're a homeless youth looking for a place to rest. The easiest and best way to support 8 Arizona PBS is by becoming a sustaining member. Your monthly contribution of $5 or more comes directly from your bank account or credit card, so you know your membership is always current. It also means no more renewal notices in your mailbox. So more of your dollars go to the programs you love. It's convenient for you, greener for us, and better for the planet. Become a sustaining member today. Tap into the art scene from coast to coast. Join the Artbeat Nation a weekly series where you'll experience a rich cultural tapestry of art stories from across America. Meet artists, writers, composers, and performers setting the pulse of the arts in America now. Join us for a brand new episode of Art Beat Nation, Sunday at 5 on 8HD. When you want to be more connected, friend us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, Watch us online. Become a news source for the Arizona PBS Public Insight Network. Your ideas and insights can help us create relevant and distinctive reporting. Join now at azpbs.org slash pin. Throughout its history, Arizona PBS and volunteers have enjoyed a rich and rewarding partnership. 
Whether answering phones during our pledge campaigns, stuffing envelopes, or assisting with special events, volunteering at 8 is fun and provides excellent work experience, team building for a group, and a sense of community involvement and importance. If you would like to volunteer at 8, or if you have dropped off our mailing list, we encourage you to call the number on your screen or go online at azpbs.org forward slash volunteer. Thank you. Arizona is full of entrepreneurs looking to create the next best thing. Cronkite News reporter Jackie Padilla caught up with a local app designer who says his product could save a life. It seems appropriate that Scott Gray works from home because his project is a personal one. He's the co-founder of Bloodhound, an app designed to help find people with dementia who may wander off. It's a situation Gray knows all too well. It's, uh, scary. His dad suffers from dementia and once went missing for three days. He's always been there for you and suddenly you're racing around to try to help him out and you just can't. So he created an app that uses Bluetooth technology to interact with a microchip. When a person reported missing is nearby, anyone with the app is notified and given a description along with information about what to do next. It's a tool Gray wishes he could have used when he was searching for his father. It's a painful experience to wonder if your dad's freezing to death or dying. From his residence, Scott's dad made it all the way here to Indian School Park, which is about 10 miles away, and days later was found another 10 miles away. And Scott thought maybe he's not the only one in his family experiencing this, and decided to take his app to an international platform. Gray is among the five finalists competing in the Phoenix Smart App Hack. It's an opportunity for app designers to go head to head for a chance to represent Arizona at the International Smart City Expo in Barcelona. What this whole plan was behind this competition was to turn urban challenges into opportunity. And Gray thinks the exposure will help people better understand what his app is all about. Missing and somebody can just be going about their day and um, help save a life. Technology that could help comfort families of those suffering from dementia. In Phoenix, Jackie Padilla, Cronkite News. App Hack will be October 7th. Three participants will be selected to rep represent Phoenix in Barcelona. A program de designed to protect homeless teens is expanding along the Valley Metro route. I had a chance to find out how it's helping lead some of those youth to find a better path. Everyone deserves a safe place to go. I don't know what to do. I'm tired. I'm hungry. I have nothing and I need help. A 16-year-old runaway from Las Vegas found himself in need of that safe place. Where he was able to get some rest and get cleaned up and get something to eat. We were able to talk through with him uh, what his issues were and what he wanted to do next. Ken Lynch from Tumbleweed Center for Youth Development says every night, six to 800 homeless youth are looking for a place to sleep in the valley. And they go where those young people are, parks, lakes, and public transit routes. Well, it's, it's just an agreement that we have with Safe Place and with Valley Metro. Wherever Valley Metro opens a light rail station, that's where we will be. Safe Places is a national program that is for young people ages 12 to 25 who find themselves in crisis in their home life. It gives these teens a safe place to go without any pressure or persecution. We expanded Safe Place at the four new light rail stations in Mesa. So with the extension of uh, light rail into Central Mesa, we have extended our commitment to the community through Safe Place. Teens wanting to use the Safe Place program need to follow three simple steps. First, hit the emergency button, tell the operator they need Safe Place assistance, and then follow the operator's instructions. This easy three-step process has helped more than 100 teens this past year in Arizona and has helped Safe Places achieve their goal, return these teens back to their family. He's back where he belongs, uh, a much wiser uh, young man for his experience, but he had reached the end of his rope. He literally didn't know what to do or where to go, and if it wasn't for Safe Place, who knows what would have happened to this young man. In spring 2016, the light rail will continue to expand into northwest Phoenix with three new stations that will also have safe place contacts at them as well. It turns out traditional surfboards are bad for the environment. Coming up on Cronkite News, we'll take you to the coast to see what businesses are doing to make surfing more sustainable. Fridays, it's at Cronkite News, your social sharing connection where you choose the news. Facebook likes and shares, tweets, retweets, and favorites. 
YouTube views and subscriptions. We're watching you watch us. From our digital home at cronkitenews.azpbs.org to your television, web browser, or mobile device. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Then join us for At Cronkite News, our weekly refresh, each Friday at 5 on Arizona PBS. See this flower garden? There used to be a car sitting there, a car I didn't use and didn't want. So I donated it to public television, and they took care of everything. In addition to supporting my favorite programs, I earned a tax deduction. Turn something you don't need into something you really want. Contact the Vehicle Donation Program. For over 35 years, Rick Steves has been teaching Arizonans on smart travel in Europe. Go online right now and become a $6 sustaining monthly donor or make a one-time contribution to aid of $75. And we'll say thank you by sending you to see Rick Steves' seminar. You'll learn the latest on stretching your travel dollar, avoiding crowds, eating and sleeping well, and packing smart. Remember, your support keeps all the travel shows you love right here on this station. Go online right now. Thank you. Cronkite News is a real newsroom with real stories told by real reporters. Bringing you the latest in all news, all Arizona. Live in Yuma. Live in Globe. Reporting live in Phoenix. Live at the Republican headquarters in downtown Phoenix. Cronkite News directly connects the nation's capital to yours. While Arizonans anxiously await the outcome. I spoke to Congresswoman Kirkpatrick. Live in Washington, D.C., Stephen Hicks, Cronkite News. Now airing on 8HD, this is Cronkite News. 8 is Arizona PBS, a service of Arizona State University. The amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has increased by over 40% since the Industrial Revolution. The excess of CO2 gets absorbed by the oceans, which leads to several problems. Cronkite News sustainability reporter Steve Dent is in the broadcast center to show us how the natural sport of surfing is trying to change its ways. Most people never get the chance to see how a surfboard gets built because of the toxic fumes and chemicals involved in the process. Earth Technologies, a surfboard manufacturer out of Los Angeles, allowed me to see how they crafted an eco surfboard from start to finish as the surfing industry attempts to take sustainability for a ride. The sport of surfing relies on taking care of the environment but something has to change for surfing to become sustainable. If we don't take those steps that we need to take to protect our ocean, we're not gonna have a playground to play in. The oil spill in Santa Barbara last May closed down several California beaches. Increased carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has led to ocean surface temperatures and sea level rise being at an all-time high. It's a pretty sad picture. I know. All you have to do is order an eco board to do your part. The traditional surfboard, the iconic vehicle of an entire culture, harms the environment, making surfing unsustainable. Surfboards are some of the most toxic sporting goods out there, and nobody really talks about that. The typical surfboard gets built from petroleum-based, non-renewable polyurethane foam, then gets coated with layers of toxic polyester resin. Yeah, you up in the bag, I'll put it in. E-Tech makes eco-friendly surfboards that help reduce the life cycle carbon footprint of a board using technology and science. Come on! There we go. Ryan Harris begins with an expanded polystyrene blank called EPS, which is 100% recyclable. Then Harris shapes the foam to look like a surfboard. E-Tech also uses bio-epoxy resin, called SuperSap. SuperSap is less toxic, making it healthier for surfboard makers. But when Ryan Harris started using the first USDA-certified bio-epoxy, he didn't care that it was eco. He cared about how it made his board perform. All of a sudden, my boards didn't break. You know, and I'm a pretty big dude, so I, I'm used to breaking boards. Surfers have always kind of been eco, but they don't, uh, except when it comes to their boards. Fiberglass. The eco project aims to reduce ocean acidification, sea level rise, and ocean surface temperatures, which affects coastal ecosystems, mainly the coral reefs, and the long-term future of surfing. It's in our name, Earth Technologies. 
we are all about using sustainable materials from the earth to create a high performance product. If nothing changes, surf breaks around the globe will be threatened by perennial high tide as sea levels continue to rise. But consumers now have a choice. They can go green. Uno, dos, in Australian surfer Sally Fitzgibbons became the first pro surfer to win an event on an eco board. Currently, she is the third ranked female surfer in the world. Results like this will help the eco board movement going forward as trends have shown a trickle down effect from the superstars of surfing to the average surfer. In the Broadcast Center, I'm Steve Dent, Cronkite News. Cronkite News is proud to be the news division of Arizona PBS. Now here's a look at what's next on Arizona Horizon. Coming up after Cronkite News, it's Arizona Horizon. We'll hear from a children's advocate about an important source of funding for education. And we'll find out about a group that helps abused kids find comfort in the arts. That's next on Arizona Horizon. I'm Gwen Eiffel on the next news hour, a look at the people on the front lines fighting Western wildfires. That's Wednesday on the PBS News Hour. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org.